welcome to SALT. Um, if you don't know much about us, we are one of the services run by All Saints Church in Western Bath. Uh, we run once a month normally from the Western Hub and uh, it's a short and informal and family friendly service. And when we're together, we eat food as well. And hopefully it won't be too long before we're together again and we can, we can eat together again because that's very special. Um, many of you will know that SALT is just over five years old. Perhaps what you don't know is uh, how it came about. In 2015 we did a trip to Malawi with um, seven local young people from our community. They weren't from church or faith backgrounds. And, um, but we said to them, when we get back, we're going to um, do some feedback at the evening service. And we were given permission to take over that service. We made it our own, we did the feedback, and we said to the young people, bring your family and, uh, and bring your friends to listen to this feedback. And they all came, and they all brought family and friends. And um, at the end of the service, the families said, if church was like this, we'd come. So we said, okay, well, let's do church like this then. And that's uh, kind of what salt is, really. Um, you'll see that I'm wearing my uh, Malawi Flames football shirts, the national national team's football shirt, and this used to belong to Mac. Mac gave it to me. Um, Mac is uh, probably the person who's had the biggest impact on everyone that we've taken out to Malawi over the years, and um, we're going to be hearing from Mac in a few moments. Um, but just to put into context what's going on in Malawi at this difficult time, um, you know, Malawi is known as the warm heart of Africa. And if you've ever been, if you've ever met the people, you know exactly why it's called the warm heart of Africa. But it is one of the very poorest countries in the world. Um, they, and they struggle with um, HIV, AIDS, massive problem there, malaria, extreme we weather that causes droughts and floods, um, as well as extreme poverty. Um, they also face a lot of corruption within the government. They're, they're currently in their second election because the, the, the one earlier in the year was declared null and void because of corruption. And then in April, they had their first case of COVID-19 and the government immediately put the country into lockdown. But the people took to the streets and said, you can't do that, we'll die. We can't go into lockdown. We'd rather catch coronavirus than starve to death. And then the High Court overruled the decision to put them into lockdown. So, you know, social distancing is a, is a very tricky thing in places like Malawi. Um, and also they don't have the same levels of hygiene equipment as we do here in the UK. Anyway, that's a bit of context and that's enough from me. Let's hear from the man, Mac. Uh, my, my name is MacDonald Kutabasa. And I live in Blanta, Malawi, in Central Africa. Um, I am married um, to my wife, Susan, and I have two children, uh, Jerome, who is eight years old, and also have um, Ntunzi, who is three years old. Um, I was born in a family of um, 10 children, Sorry, I mean, uh, I was born in a family of 12 children, uh, and I am the 10th born. Sadly, um, I lost the three brothers and the three sisters. At the moment, we are only um, six children left. Um, I lost my siblings mostly because of HIV and AIDS, uh, which is really a big problem here in Malawi and I also know in so many other African countries. Um, I was born in 1976, um, so I'm over 40 years old. I work in a village called Baluti, which is here in Blanta. Um, Baluti um, is a very, very poor community. Of course, Malawi as a country is very poor, but Baluti in, pa in particular is a very uh, poor township. Um, it has a lot of um, social problems, and my work is actually uh, helping most of the children and families in the village 
to actually help them to live uh, a better life. The organization I work for is uh, Chimwemwe Children's Center, which uh, I helped to to establish. And um, it's actually Chimwemwe is a pilot project there in Baluti village, which encourages children to attend the school and also prevent the children from leaving uh, their homes to go in the streets of Blanta and major cities to beg for a better life. The problem is that uh, most of the people in the village uh, do not have um, formal employment or parents and guardians, they don't have formal uh, support, uh, they're not able to support their children or their families. As a result, children drop out of school and then they end up going into the streets uh, to to beg for money and also for food. Um, Baluti is a community which has about uh, 15,000 members and of which about 5,000 and are under the age of 18. Of the number of children that are um, are going to uh, uh, should be going to school, 50% of them are actually not uh, able to go to school because of so many problems. And uh, my work, we support these children, we help them to go to school by providing them with learning materials uh, like notebooks, pens, but also pay for school fees to some children who are in secondary school and also provide school uniforms. Here in Malawi, children are not allowed to go to school if they don't have school uniforms. So um, my work is actually helping these children to, we support these children uh, through meeting some of their needs like uh, providing them with um, learning materials. Um, in this community, uh, Baluti, Parents and guardians do not value education or they don't see the need of their children to go to school. And the primary way of earning money for most of the women is actually uh, through like women they enter into prostitution. And the same problems also affects young girls who by the age of 12, 13 or 14 years, they drop out of school and they enter into prostitution, which is really uh, very sad. And as a result, uh, the HIV AIDS pandemic is actually claiming a lot of lives, but has also uh, affected a lot of people in this community. Yeah, it, it's sad when I recall back to where I come from, because um, as I said, uh, I lost both my parents, uh, I lost uh, six, uh, six siblings, the three brothers and uh, three sisters because of HIV AIDS. And um, Luckily, I but I have my parents, both my father and my mom are still alive, and they don't live very far from where I live. Uh, my father is almost just over 90 years old, and my mom is eight, 82, which is very unusual. People in Malawi, they actually don't live um, longer, but um, I thank God that um, I have my parents still alive. Uh, um, sadly, uh, as I grew up, I could not actually. Uh, we didn't. Re I didn't really receive like uh, enough support from them because of poverty. Uh, they could actually struggle to provide for us. Um, I remember uh, living, like going to bed without food. Um, they could not even afford to provide uh, clothes for us, and. Um, I didn't even have like a pair of shoes until when I was uh, 12 years old. So I grew up just like walking bare feet. Uh, going We're going to have to leave that there for now. But um, I think in the near future, we'll have to do a part two because Matt's got so much more to say and there's so much, uh, so much richness in there. Um, do make a note somewhere to pray for Malawi, to pray for all those things we mentioned earlier, you know, the weather, the corruption, everything else, but also for Mac and Susan, um, for JJ who has asthma, so difficult time for him at the moment, and also for Tunzi who has cerebral palsy, um, and the work of Chimwemwe in um, in Baluti as well. Dear Lord, I'd like to just start off by saying thank you to Mac, and I pray, I pray for a blessing over him and his family and just say a massive thank you for what he does for Malawi and that beautiful country. We also want to pray for Malawi uh, and hope that the elections go well 
and that they stay safe and the spread of coronavirus isn't as bad as it has been anywhere else. We also would like to pray again for Malawi when it comes to enough water for the crops, but not too much where, you know, it's going to flood the places like has done. So we pray for the perfect conditions for their crops. And like I said, we want to just pray one more time for Mac and his beautiful family. Amen. Right. Uh, we're going to head over to Phil, who's going to lead us in a time of sun praise. And then we're going to go to Joe, who's going to share with us what God's put on our heart for us today. Hello, Salt. Uh, my name, if you didn't know me, is Phil. I'm a friend of Clive's and I'm the children and families team leader at All Saints Church. So Clive's asked me to do some songs for Salt this month. And he said I could do a children's song if I want. So I'm going to start off with one of my favourite children's songs, which is called God Made Me. It's by a man called Bob Hartman. Uh, it's a bit of a tongue twister. It's a bit of a fun song, but it repeats the same phrases over and over again, so it's easy to pick up. And it's quite nice to sing. And the message in it is lovely because it talks about how God made all of creation, made all these beautiful things, and he made us all different, but he loves us. So, God made me. God made the chickens and the cows and the bees. God made the shrubs and the flowers and the trees. God made the tops and the bottoms. by Wren Collective, which I think has been done at Salt uh, in the past. And I've chosen this song because I really like the message of hope in this song, that um, 
with God in our lives, with Jesus in our lives, the power of his Holy Spirit, um, we can be more than conquerors. Uh, conquerors over the darkness and the rubbish that the world throws at us and the stuff, the rubbish that's in our heads and in our hearts. With God's power we can overcome and conquer that. So let's sing More Than Conquerors. <laughs>
love of hope. Thank you, God. Amen. Hi, everybody. Uh, so this may sound like the classic thing for me to talk about, hearts, uh, but I believe it's a really important message for us all to hear. Um, I think our hearts are like the key to our relationships with others, but also our key to our relationship with God. God is love. Uh, he's the reason we're all here. He's our creator. He created us. And over the past few weeks, I've been asking a few of you to send some pictures of your hearts. Um, you might have created a heart-shaped cookie or a heart-shaped drawing. Um, or found some lovely heart-shaped things around your house. Um, but here's what you guys came up with. I gave the same task to several different people and um, that was to create a picture or a photo of something heart-shaped. Um, it's the same idea but different ways of expressing it. And I think our hearts are the same. They're the most unique things about us, yet we all have one. Um, we can carry love in our hearts, we can carry hate, passion, anger, kindness for all sorts of different things. All are capable of feeling those things, but we all express it in different ways. Our hearts are like the base camp for those emotions. Have you ever thought about what is in your heart? Have you ever thought about what state your heart is in? Luke 6 verse 45 says, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, but an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. If your heart and mind are full of goodness, then you will overflow with goodness. So what are you filling up on? So from our hearts comes all the ability to do all those things like love and forgive and repent and feel all those emotions like kindness and goodness and self-control. We choose those things with our minds sometimes but it's when it comes from our heart that things start to change. And love is desperately needed in our society. We've seen so much lately um, of horrific things like racism and selfishness and greed. We've heard about the lootings and the murder of George Floyd and those things that really get our hearts racing, really get us angry. And yet, all of that is an opportunity to choose love whether it's raising awareness for Black Lives Matter or raising awareness for what the government are saying about staying at home to save lives, or whether it's about just supporting a neighbour who's doing a fundraising walk or run or cycle. All of those are opportunities to choose love. Love is behind the creation of the whole universe. Love is in all of us. But some of us bury it, don't we? Some of us hoard it. Some of us give it away. And we're probably all capable of all of those things. But what will you do with love? I think to stand up for injustice is to choose love. But I also think your heart needs to be open. Are our hearts open or closed? What is the state of our hearts? Each of us have a role. Each of us have passion and gold to contribute to this world and to those close to us. If you affect one person positively or tens of thousands, it doesn't matter because you're choosing love and you're using your uniqueness to affect others and hopefully allowing yourself to be affected too. I think what you say and do reflects what's in your heart. 
So I'll ask again, what is the state of your heart? 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 says, God sees not as people see. People look on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. God sees the heart of a person. He can see beyond our greedy motives or our selfish choices. He sees the parts of our hearts that lead us to those decisions. He understands why and he understands how. I believe that God knows when things start to get ugly inside. He knows just what will bring us out of our ugliness. He urges us to give our hearts to him so we can begin to mend and be loved. And, and that happens again and again and again. Psalm 139 says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You know my thoughts. He knows it all already. There's no backstory. There's no context. He just knows. We don't need to be giving him excuses. He understands us. And Psalm 51 verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. And I think we can use this verse like a prayer. When we mess up, we can ask God to clean up that stuff inside that we don't like the look of. And we can ask him to help us turn around. And with that right spirit within us, we can move from unproductive to productive, to, from unloving to loving, from ungrateful to grateful, from timid to courageous, from cold-hearted to warm-hearted. And I don't know if you've seen recently, there was a picture um, going around on Facebook and Instagram of some police officers in Miami who actually took a knee on the ground. They, they knelt on the ground um, in response to the protesters protest, protesting against Black Lives Matter after the death of George Floyd. And um, I think this is a beautiful picture for um, you know, hearts softening of people deliberately choosing love rather than silence or apathy or anger or hatred or indifference, just not caring. They humbled and they softened their hearts to join themselves with other unique humans in a cause that could divide, but actually they chose love um, and it united them. I believe that God is loving and that he loves us. But it shouldn't stop there. His love is for giving away. And the more that we behave like Jesus, the more God's love becomes apparent in us. And I think the more we love others, the more we feel loved. Because that's our purpose. That's what God created us to do and to be, is to be loving and to be loved. And that's why we need to keep our hearts soft and we need to keep our hearts facing God. He is the only one that can heal and mend and repair. Only him. And it's through God we can find our purpose, which I believe is to love and be loved. So just as a response now, a screen's going to come up with all the heart pictures that you sent in. Um, with some music in the background and I'd just love it if you could ask yourself these two questions find a quiet space and time on your own perhaps if that's possible number one ask God to show you your uniqueness what does he love about you things that make you different from everyone else and things that make you you there's that verse we talked about earlier you have searched me and you know me God he knows it all so just let him show you, things might come to mind, um, that are good things about you and that make you unique. And number two is, are there things in your heart that need to change? Are you angry? Are you hurting? Are you bitter, judgmental, jealous, insecure, self-loathing? Ask God to help you change your heart and give the, ugly, the ugly things away to him. Let's remember those verses. God looks at the heart. He wants the heart to be um, the key to how you behave to other people. And that other verse about renew in me a clean heart, O oh God. And just ask him to take away the dirt and put in something new and clean. 
Amen. I feel the weight of the world on my shoulder As I'm getting older, your people get colder Most of us only care about money making Selfishness got us following the wrong direction Wrong information no was shown by the media Negative images, it's the main criteria Infecting the young minds faster than bacteria Kids wanna act like what they see in the cinemas What happened to the love and the values of humanity? What happened to the love and the fairness and equality? Where's the love? Instead of spreading love, we're spreading animosity. Where's the love? Lack of understanding leading us away from unity. Where's the love? Okay, we are about done. And um, before we go, I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this with us. Um, underneath you will find some links to uh, the Black Eyed Peas video um, that you heard a little snippet of in the response there. All Saints Western Church where you can find out more about what goes on in the life of the church and other services. There's a link to the Malawi 2015 video of uh, the trip that we did out there. And there's also some contact details if you want to get in touch with, with us here at Enrich. Um, then do get in touch, we'd love to hear from you. Otherwise we'll see you in July. Um, if you've enjoyed this, if you found it helpful, please do share it with other people and um, we hope to see you soon. God bless.